Welcome. Hello all and welcome. Come grab your seats. I am Trey Balchowski and Amy is riled up today. <laughs> um, I am here not to curate, but to introduce you to someone. Tonight's curator. I met this person when I worked at William Sonoma in the corporate office. I would like you to imagine uh, a 24-year-old me with pink hair working at William Sonoma Corporate. It was hilarious, and I didn't fit in. And this man came up to me one day, and he had in his hand the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. It was dark chocolate with salt-covered caramel. And I was like, I don't know who you are, but I love you. And so I'd like to welcome Michael to the stage. This is Michael's first talk ever. It was 2014, our first year. This is when we con people into getting on stage with mm, 12 hours notice sometimes. And Michael was one of those people. In April, he came on stage for Lost and told the story of the Lost Mayan cities. Um, and, yes, Lost. We were very lost. And he had three days? Three days notice. And he stuck with us, which is amazing. And I'm so happy and so proud to have him on our stage as a curator for the first time. So please welcome Michael. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Trey and Anetta and Isolde and Tamar and everyone else here who creates this thing. Uh, and welcome to Odd Salon. So. Tonight, uh, I'm Michael Salazzo. Uh, I'm usually Michael Salazzo most other nights as well. But tonight, I'm your curator and your host for the evening. Uh, and welcome to Wild. So before we get started, uh, I'd like a show of hands. Who, who is here for the first time tonight? Yay! Thank you, everyone. Um, this is a community that gets together. We learn all sorts of amazing, weird, awesome, wild things. Uh, and we're gonna tell you a little bit about how it works because this is definitely a participatory event. So uh, tonight, we will be sharing six stories inspired by the odd corners of history, science, art, and adventure. Exactly. Uh, there will be a short cocktail break in the middle so you may refresh your glass. Our speakers are both experts and enthusiastic amateurs, uh, so please be generous with your applause. Uh, yes, good practice, practice. So, um, as you notice, this is not a quiet event. We would like you to continue to make noise and engage throughout, uh, so the speakers know that you're still here because it's kind of bright. Um, so. You know, it helps. It kind of like keeps the energy going. Uh, so here's how it works. And regulars, please help me out. Yes! <laughs> also ships. It's like when you ship someone and you build a relationship. Exactly. <laughs> Science. Science. Kind of, but also bears. bears. <laughs> Here, we'll try that one again. Bears. There you go. And last but definitely not least. Science. And let's, let's do it loud enough so he can hear us. Science! Science. Science. Good job. Uh, so, we also like to add things, you know, make it a little bit different every week. Uh, so tonight I'm going to thank Casey and Scott, two of our speakers, for providing the idea for the word of tonight. Uh, so firstly, Casey had a little something hidden in uh, several of her slides. Uh, and then I needed to obscure some other images later on, which you might see. Um, and so tonight's word is... Waldo. Yes, Waldo is actually hidden in all of our presentations tonight. <laughs> So, if you see him, yell, Waldo! Right, and this happens to be Waldo that is actually on a building and visible from Google Earth in Antwerp. Eureka! <laughs> Science! Art. 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 So, 
As you know, this is a participatory project by design. Our stage is your stage. So if you have a story that you would like to tell, uh, you're welcome to. And we actually invite you to enter that story into uh, our repository at oddsalon.com speak. Uh, and you can join our email list as well from there and hear about upcoming themes. Uh, and also, please do not put your phones away. We would love you to take photos, put them on the tweeting thing and the other thing, and Facebook would love to have your data. So... <laughs> and finally, you may hear us refer, uh, refer to our conversation group on Facebook called Something Weird, uh, which is where we post follow-ups uh, to, you know, to the stories that we tell here. And you can join us there. You can share weird stories that you hear about. Uh, and then also kind of hear about other little additions after the salon. So, wild. Wild is a wonderfully weird word. We use it to describe anything from the randomness of Joker's wild and playing cards to the offbeat antics of wild and crazy guys <laughs> to evoke the lawlessness of the Wild West. <laughs> and evidently, even to name a hockey team, uh, which I have to ask if it uses a puck, is it still sports ball? Um, I feel like we could ask the Flat Earthers about it and they'd let us know. Um, in any case, the connotation of wild, at least for some, can also be negative. There's uncontrollable and erratic wild behavior. Uh, there's uncouth and uncivilized wildlings. Ship. <laughs> there's untamed and ferocious wild beasts with nasty big pointy teeth. <laughs> And perhaps the deciding factor, whether wild is positive, neutral, or negative, is if you're one of those enjoying the wild times or judging them from afar, which highlights an issue. Wild seems entirely subjective based upon the biases and experiences of the observer. So in other terms, what is wild to one may be tame for another. So wild in, and its antonyms become proxies for things we control and things we do not. They become the lines drawn between chaos and order. <laughs> you thought you had OCD. Uh, so this line, this line is obviously constantly moving. Humans order the world into cities which encroach upon nature's wilderness. But nature reclaims that which older civilizations have built. So what was civil, what was civil becomes wild. No, I did not Photoshop this. And what was wild becomes mm, boring, I don't know. Um, too soon. Uh, of course, not every culture has such a combative or dichotomous view of this interplay of forces. Many humans integrate themselves within their natural environments instead of attempting to stamp the wildness out of it. Why some humans seem hell-bent on taming the wild can possibly be traced to Judeo-Christian dominion theology or even Plato's earlier work on dualism. But at least some of Plato's fellow Greeks knew that wildness and cutting loose are part of human behavior. The Greek god Pan, for instance, was, and still is in some ways, worshipped as the god of the wild, of nature, mountains, fertility, and wilderness. His counterpart in this regard was Dionysus, one of the 12 Olympians and the god of wine, theater, more fertility, uh, and ritual madness, which is not a bad gig. Um, <laughs> he was also the only god of the 12 Olympians born of, of a mortal mother. He was put on trial for claiming to be a god, and he came back to life after death. So basically, he's like Jesus, but he skipped walking on water and went straight to drowning in wine. <laughs> So, now the Greeks weren't the only ones who understood the need for getting wild. Romans celebrated Saturnalia, a winter solstice festival when social order would be overturned and loud, boisterous parties would be held. Indeed, <laughs> almost every society has some outlets for cutting loose. So, it's really not about either or when it comes to civilization and wildness, or order and chaos, it's yes and. And if there's ever a day to invoke whatever powers exist to help us find that balance, it's an equinox. 
Now, before we raise a glass, I would like to mention that my parents are in the audience tonight. This is their first odd salon, so welcome. And growing up, they shared with me a saying they heard from their own parents that life is best enjoyed with everything in moderation, including moderation. <laughs> now, we've all heard this many, many times in many different ways. It's been uh, you know, attributed to a whole bunch of folks. But most appropriately for tonight, uh, and if he didn't say it first, he at least said it loudly, it's from Oscar Wilde. <laughs> so, on this day of balance, please join me in raising a glass to Dionysus, Pan, and all the wild ones. May they help us find right relation between order and chaos, between light and dark, and between civility and the wild one in us all. <laughs> Cheers. And we have a wonderful lineup for you this evening. Uh, Odd Salon fellow Casey Selden will be returning. Uh, also, for their second talks, we're going to have Aaron Doran and uh, Edmund Zagorin, uh, or Zagorin. Edmund, where are you? I didn't ask. Zagorin. Zagorin, thank you. <laughs> Things I should have asked ahead of time. Uh, and new to the stage tonight, we have three new speakers. Uh, we have, thank you, yes, new speakers. Uh, Courtney Brown, Megan Dahl, and Scott Valentine will be on stage. And up first, to share the story, of a drunken Russian's conquest of Mongolia. We have Edmund Zagorin. Uh, thank you and welcome back for your second talk. Come on up, Edmund. <laughs> <laughs> 